So, aquarium maintenance is not my favorite thing. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at my first fish tank. We post about twice a day, so for up to the minute updates, follow us at my first fish tank. We post a new video to this YouTube channel every single Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But if you want to see it a week early, just become a member of my first fish tank. It's easy. Go to myfirstfishtank.com, scroll down a little bit, you'll see a member sign up form, and then we post them to the members only tab one week before everybody else. If there's any product that you're interested in or have a question that I'm using in this video, check the description below. I'll have a link to all of the products. You can also leave a comment and I'll answer your question as soon as I can. And do us a quick favor, hit subscribe and turn on those notifications down below so you don't miss any of our weekly videos. I don't love doing aquarium maintenance, but you know, it's a necessary evil. And I have five tanks, but I'm really only using three of them that are active right now. So what I wanna do is I just wanted to walk through everything that I do. The road to aquarium maintenance starts right in here. And let me show you why. RODI water. I make my RDI water outside. I use 180 gallon per day from Bulk Reef Supply. I keep two 20 gallon containers out here. The other ones disappeared. I have one for fresh water RODI and then I have one for salt water RODI. Because of my setup, I have to wheel both 20 gallon containers all the way into the garage, plug them in, warm them up, mix the salt water, and then I have to lift them from there into the house. Let's do that. Such a pain in the ass. I keep forgetting to share this with you. Get 10% off your next order at Marine Depot. Just use the promo code MYFIRSTFISHTANK, all one word. You'll get 10% off your entire order. There are some exclusions. All right, back to the video. It's not fancy, but this is my mixing station. And I gotta start this out right away because I need this to heat up. Although it's almost summer, so it's not a big deal. I plug in my heater. I plug in my circulation pump, then I add the salt. This is my current salt. I don't love it so low on calcium that I have to add a butt ton of calcium every single week just to bring it up to 450. But you know something, it's super cheap. And when you have five tanks, sometimes that really matters. I usually start with like seven scoops. One, I count out loud in case you're wondering, because if I don't, sometimes I forget how many I put in. I know it seems ridiculous, but it works. Three. Four, five, six. Because I have a power head in here, I have it pointed so that it's circulating. I don't have to stir it, which is awesome. Okay, this is super annoying, but this is full of 20 gallons. I'm not strong enough to lift it in over this lip. I should just not fill it as high, but I use almost all of this RODI water. Morning. I have to take five gallons out and then I can lift it in. Watch. I have two automatic RODI top-off systems with their reservoirs. I keep one in here, one of them's back in my room, but I make sure that the container is big enough to hold at least a week. This one can hold like a week and a half. I keep an MJ1200 permanently in my RODI bucket because I hate scooping water into here. I have the Tunes oscillator attached to this one. And that goes down to this five gallon bucket. So that one's automated, which is nice. Daily task, because I don't have an ATO system on the 20 gallon lawn tank. Top off of RDI water. I need two of these basically in order to work. In. This is my coral quarantine tank. There's no corals in there right now, but if there were, I would also be dosing calcium and alkalinity. Daily task done. Another super annoying weekly task is to clean up my spills. Look at that. I don't know how so much water got down there, but I always do something like this. Weekly task, clean up after myself. Urgh. Weekly task, I like to overfeed my tanks about once a week, and I really only overfeed this reef tank. Today, I'm going to overfeed two foods. The only reason I overfeed like this once a week is because I'm gonna be cleaning this big time very, very shortly, so I figure I'll just siphon all this stuff out. While the food is floating around there for like 20 minutes, I'll take the time to do the glass cleaning. I've used the flipper for a long time. It's fantastic. So let's clean the glass.
feel like I'm in a dungeon right now. I'm in the dark garage. Let's check it out. It's actually pretty good. It's about 33. I'll add about a half a cup, but I know from experience that the salt I'm using will be way too low for calcium. I want to make sure I add the right amount of calcium, so I actually use Bulk Resupply products, so I just use their calculator. Normally you'd want to test so you know exactly how much, but because I've done this several times, I know that the Live Aquarius salt is 400 parts per million calcium, so I just put in 15 gallons, 400, want it to be 450, boom, there you go. I'm going to dose about 75 milliliters of the calcium chloride. Nothing fancy about this, this is underneath my 40 gallon burrito quarantine tank. Soda ash, calcium. Have a little dispenser here, boom, have it calcium on there. Gonna fill up to 75. All right, let's go add it in. Before we start the water change and use the gravel vac to siphon everything out, we gotta turn everything off that we're not gonna be using right now. That includes the Vortec auto top off, secondary heater, and the skimmer. I have spilled tons of water on the floor because I have not used one of these glow clippies. So now I just use this little quick, what is it called? Quick grip, all right? I take the end of my gravel vac, put it in here, I clamp it down. That way I don't spill water everywhere. I have a MJ1200. I just plug it in, put it on in, and we're good to go. It's also a good time when I'm doing this to clean off my aquascape just using the fresh water. This really cleaning out the filter floss that I use, this is really in every three days for me. If I'm really bad, I'll go a week. There's a lot on there right now because of the cyano outbreak. And then the skimmer cup right here, take a peek. Eee. This is not the best skimmer, let me tell you right now, but I'll clean that out. I know you probably can't feel my excitement, but hiding in these PVC is the yellow watchman Gobi. He's been in here for two months while the display tank lied fallow after a marine velvet or ick or Brooklyn Isle outbreak, not sure which one it was. But today, my calendar said I can put him in the display tank. Got him. It was easy. Okay, we're gonna turn the lights down before we introduce the Watchman Gobi. So I'm gonna turn it to all all blues. So it's probably not gonna look good on the camera. Sorry about that. The 40 gallon breeder tank right here is the fish only. 20 gallon long tank is the coral and invert. Is a 10 gallon emergency medical tank. I don't use it, I don't have to touch it. Step one for the 40 gallon breeder, algae scrape. Even scrape, time for the water change. But the sponges for this one, I'll show you here. They just come in a little double here. This is the only biological filtration, so what I do is I just rinse this in the uh, salt water that I'm about to dispose of. That way I don't kill any of the beneficial bacteria that are in there. Whenever I'm doing aquarium maintenance, I have got to have lots of towels. So I have tons of rags and I usually carry like two around with me. I put like one in each pocket because I go through them like it's nobody's business. Other weekly chores I do here, I just wipe down, dust a little bit over here, wipe down the outside, clean off the top. Honestly, quarantine tank maintenance is actually pretty simple. There's not a lot of moving parts. So I would take this out, clean it once every six months, probably. The heater over here, if there's any sort of calcium deposits, maybe every six months, take it out, soak it in, in, in a little bit of vinegar, wipe that off. And then I have my Z Osmolator right over here. I do take care of this probably quarterly, if not a little bit more. It has this little sensor here, and if this gets dirty or if the float switch gets gunked up, it won't work properly. When I'm cleaning this tank, I gotta be a little bit careful because the RAS can be a jumper. And so I'm always watching and listening to make sure the RAS isn't jumping. We're gonna start with getting the cyano off of the rock, just scrubbing it off, and then scrubbing all of the glass walls and the bottom. Let's go. Oh, 
I've got to upgrade this bad boy because look at that flow. That is atrocious. But another weekly chore is to clean out the filter floss. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, look at the flow. Look how much better it is already. And then I think I have a carbon bag. It's probably okay. I'm just going to rinse it out a little bit in here. Much of a problem anymore because it only has the fish and the snails. So I don't feed it very much. So let's see how much that slows it down, huh? Good. Okay. Good amount of flow. Sweet. This is all the water that's left in my saltwater mix. You can see 20 gallons is pretty good for those three tanks. So once I get the 120 up and going, I don't plan on doing large water changes with 120. I want to make that a more self-sufficient system. But quarantines, you just have to water change. Quarterly or every six months, take this out, uh, open it up, soak it in vinegar. Same, there's a pump over here as well, take that out. I'll probably take the whole thing off every six months, just give it a really solid clean dust off the light, maybe soak this heater in vinegar as well if there's a problem. But other than that, that's pretty much all the maintenance that's required for this one. I probably just went through about 30 gallons of water between the salt water and the RODI top offs. Then comes cleaning up. I don't know about you, but I make a mess when I'm doing this. And there's water on the ground, unfortunately, and I got all the equipment I gotta rinse off and clean. Let's get the RDI filter started and then we'll go start the cleanup process. <sighs> Hands down my least favorite part is the cleanup. It stinks in this corner, but the only good thing is, is the kids are gone at school and the wife's away at work, so I'm not gonna bother them. Sometimes things are just too icky, like this spray rag here. So I'm just gonna put some vinegar in, let it soak, clean it right up, and we'll stop smelling. It stinks right now, woo! Okay, that's it, we pretty much did everything. That took way too long. Normally, cleaning all those tanks takes me, I don't know, two hours, maybe up to four hours. It's not that big, but when you're filming things, man, it takes so much longer. But you know what, the office is looking really nice, the setup's looking great. There's only a couple other things that I do. For example, in this tank right here, because I have so many corals and I haven't quite fine-tuned how much calcium and alkalinity I should give it, I do test with the HANA Instruments alkalinity checker about once a week. Um, and I'm just kind of adjusting. I'm dosing about 10 milliliters to 12 milliliters of two part a day. And it seems to be working just fine. Other than that, guys, I'm done with the cleaning. Hope you found this valuable. I don't know. What do you guys do? Let me know. Happy reefing, everybody. And thanks for stopping by my first fish tank. Hey, it's nighttime here. Hey, everybody. We're here with Dave, and he's one of my followers at my first fish tank. And he saw that I was having a problem with cyanobacteria. And he had a great recommendation. And his recommendation was blue leg hermit crabs. I love saltwater aquarium's been doing it for a long time, but honestly, when it comes to livestock, I'm no expert. What is your Instagram? It's aquarium.works. Aquarium works with a period in the middle. Yep. He contacted me and said, hey, how about we bring over some of these hermit crabs and they might help the problem. So if you want some amazing service, contact Dave here, okay? hand delivered to my house. Like, it's pretty amazing. But, and he was so nice because you know what? Not everybody wants to be in front of a giant camera. So Dave, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Follow him, aquarium.works, and I'll put all the links down below. Have a reason, everybody. Bye. Don't forget we post a new video to YouTube every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so subscribe by clicking right here. If you'd like to build your first saltwater aquarium and or get these videos one week before everybody else, go to myfirstfishtank.com. The link should be right here. Follow us on Instagram at myfirstfishtank, and why don't you check out this video? It's probably all right. Happy reefing, everybody.